This is my Ford Bronco that over the first year of ownership I have slowly turned into the overland rig it is today. Everything from a rack, sliders, lights, and steering upgrades, I will cover it all in this video. My name is David, and this is the rig that gets me off the grind. My name is David with Off The Grind, and behind me is my 2022 Bronco Badlands with a Sasquatch package that over the last year, I built in to the Overland rig that you see now. There's a lot of parts on there that have been provided by different companies that I work with. In that case, I will let you guys know in full transparency what's what, that I'll link all the products in the description. Some are affiliate links, so if you like this video, found it helpful, and you want some of the parts that I have, please use those links because it helps me out a tremendous amount. Okay, let's get into the walk around, starting at the front bumper. So one of the first things I did was address lighting. I found that the Bronco had a really poor lighting when I first started using it. So that was one of the first things I needed to address. Because I have the modular bumper, it didn't come with fog lights. So you have a couple options as far as a fog light pocket kit. I chose Diode Dynamics. So what I have here is one SS3 Pro and two SSC2 Pros. The SS3 is 3000 lumens at 3000K temperature, which is the yellow. The SSC2s are 1988 lumens at 6000 uh, Kelvin. Diode Dynamic has their own bracket that they sent with this kit. So it's all plug and play. It goes into your upfitter switches. It's an incredibly easy installation. Um, and these were a game changer for me, specifically the amber fogs. I use them all the time. I can't really get down there and show you, but the other thing that I've done on the front end of this vehicle is address the steering rack. So the weak tie rods on the Broncos have been well documented, but I believe there's some misconception happening there. The tie rods are weak because they're designed to be weak. They're supposed to be the failure point. The next weakest part of the steering system is the steering rack itself. It's far easier for the tie rods to break and for you to fix that and get that off the trail than if the rack itself were to fail. So what I did is I got the 74 weld billet aluminum end cap and bushing kit and then the Icon tie rods. The end cap is extremely weak. It's a cast aluminum, it's really thin. Um, and it's, it would be the next thing to fail if you upgrade the tie rods without upgrading the end cap. So it's really important to do both of those things at the same time. Otherwise, you risk breaking your steering rack itself, and that is not a fun replacement. It's also not a cheap replacement. The end cap is CNC'd out of 6061 aluminum, and the installation is really, really straightforward. Um, I did it in my driveway. I didn't have to take the steering rack out. It was a very easy installation. The tie rods are 30% thicker than the stock tie rods. They're constructed out of forged steel and they have greasable Zerk fittings. Excellent tie rod for a great price. Those sit around $400. The end cap is a bit more expensive. It's $1,000, but that thing is never going to fail you. The wheels are Relation Race Wheels, RR6Hs. The H is a hybrid, meaning that you can actually convert these to beadlocks. They're pre-drilled for that. If you don't want beadlocks, you can also run a bash plate on these. These are in the matte bronze finish, and they are a negative 12 offset, so it pokes out a little bit over uh, factory. They also have a zero offset, which will still poke out uh, a little bit over factory, just not as much as these negative 12s. The really cool thing about these wheels is if you have the Sasquatch package, these are eight pounds lighter per wheel than the Sasquatch wheels. If you're unfamiliar, unsprung weight is one of the best ways to improve the efficiency of your vehicle. The less rotating mass that it has, the easier the engine's job becomes. So that's really important to save some weight. And these, you save a ton of weight. And then I immediately negated those weight savings by putting some different tires on it. So the Goodyear Territories um, did really, really well on pavement. And in most off-road conditions, they were just incredibly weak. I didn't like them because of that. So I had to, I chose to swap them out. Initially, I was running Falcon Wild Peak RT01s. I really, really liked them. They were incredibly stiff because they have a three-ply sidewall, but they were great tires in almost all situations. I recently, as of a couple days ago, switched to the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. 
I do not have experience with these, so I can't really speak to them. But there was a lot about this tire that I really liked. It has good siping, so wet weather driving on pavement should be really good. Um, it has stone ejectors. This is a hybrid tire, so the center is all-terrain, while the outer blocks are more of a mud terrain style. It also has a super aggressive sidewall, so for all the mudding and stuff that we do in the Pacific Northwest, that should help a lot with that, be able to get traction on the sidewall and kind of scoop out through that. These also have tapered blocks, which is really cool. Um, what that does is provide more uh, structural rigidity in each of the blocks itself, so it, ha it will float around a little less. Um, this also gives you extra edges on each block to provide a little bit more traction. So these are quite a bit heavier than the Territories, but they're seven pounds lighter than the Falcon RTs that I had. That may not sound like a lot, but I've actually noticed improved gas mileage after I put these on. And these initially seemed to be a lot quieter on the road. The RTO ones were pretty loud, if I'm honest. And I, I hear far less road noise with these than I did the Falcons. So right now, I really like these. I just haven't had them off-road yet, to be perfectly honest. For ditch lights, I'm running the same SS3s that I have in the fog light position. Um, still in amber, they're still the pro, so 3,000 lumens and 3,000 Kelvin for temperature. Um, again, super easy plug and play. They go right into the upfitter switches. If you don't have those, then they come with little toggle switches as well that you can use. Really easy install, and I love these lights. These have a combo beam pattern, meaning half of it is a spot beam and half of it is a flood beam. So it has a little bit of a hot spot in the center, but it also disperses light over a pretty wide area, especially combined with the lights that I have up front. This is a really, really good setup, and I've been enjoying these ditch lights. For quite a while, I was running the stock rock rails that come on the Sasquatch package. I recently switched, however, to these rock sliders, which are from RCI Metalworks. The reason I chose RCI is because they're the only rock slider on the market that I could find with a kick out. A kick out is extremely important to me. <clears throat> if you're unfamiliar with what a kick out does, it deflects trees and stumps and rocks and stuff like that away from the rear tire. It'll actually pivot your back end around those obstacles. So a kick out is really, really helpful in offering in certain off-roading situations. Another thing I really like about these is the step plate that they offer, uh, being that my tent is so up high and the Bronco is just a taller vehicle in general, it's really nice to have that step to be able to, to get up there. And uh, my wife is pretty pumped about it. So this is a two inch square steel um, for the main support of the rock slider. And then this tube that's out here is one and three quarter inches. That is bigger than any of the competitors on the market. So they're quite heavy, they're 70 pounds each, but they're incredibly strong and they're gonna put up to all the abuse you can throw at them. One of the most commonly asked questions that I get is what roof rack do I use? I use the Trail Rack Tremor Rack. It is hands down the best on the market. This has the highest weight capacity for all the Bronco racks at 300 pounds dynamic and 850 pounds static. You have to use the rack packs to get that weight. If it's just the roof rack, then you still see the limitations of the Bronco roof, which is 100 pounds of dynamic weight. But this rack combined with the rack packs allows me to run a tent like this. Another thing I really like about this rack is on the side rails, it has a 90 degree bend. Uh, that's not something I've seen on any other rack and that does a couple of things. First of all, it drastically improves the structural rigidity of these side rails. So there's no flexing on the rack at all but it's also slotted, so if you want, you can run different accessories up there as well. This is a relatively low profile rack, given all it does. Uh, you can still remove all the roof panels with this, um, which is awesome. That was extremely important to me because I love being able to run, uh, you know, roof off in the summer. But another thing, it, it adds 3.3 inches to the highest point of your Bronco. So not a tremendous amount. Obviously, when you combine that with a tent, I'll get into this a little bit later, but this tent is seven inches up height. So in total, I have about 10 and a half inches added to the Bronco's height. Um, 
In the grand scheme of things, that's not that bad. Uh, some tents are quite a bit bigger, but the Trail Racks Tremor Rack is hands down the best rack you can get for the Bronco. I will leave a link in the description because I work with Trail Racks. They're great guys, um, great company, and they will definitely take care of you. So this system right here is the rack packs that I mentioned. This is what gives the Trail Racks Tremor Rack the weight capacity that it has. So it helps transfer some of the weight from up here to this bar, which is attached to the tub of the Bronco itself. So it distributes that weight from this, uh, from this roof to the actual frame of the vehicle. So this, in my mind, this combo is a must if you're gonna get into overlanding because you need to be able to store more weight than 100 pounds up there. The other really cool thing about the, the rack packs is just the sheer amount of modularity and accessories that are available for it. So on this side, I have the roto pack, so I have four extra gallons of fuel. On the other side, I'm currently running some traction boards, but you can do a bunch of different stuff. For a while, I was running an ax and shovel on that side, which is also an accessory they sell. So this is a really, really awesome system. One, to get you that higher weight capacity, but also to be able to stick more things outside of your vehicle. The Bronco is a little bit limited on space inside. Um, for a solo traveler like myself, it's not that big of a deal, but as soon as I load my family in there, it becomes crowded very quickly. So that's why a system like this is really cool to have. And you can get creative with what you mount on here. I've seen some people build a shelf for this so they can store their diesel heater in the winter and feed the tent more easily. So the Rack Packs is a super cool accessory to have. And if you don't have a rack, if you're looking to get a rack for your Bronco, Trail Racks is the way to go. Just don't waste your time, get a Trail Racks. Time to talk about the rooftop tent. I am running the iCamper BDB Duo. It's a relatively new tent from iCamper. It's their first wedge style tent. Um, and I love this thing. Before this, I was using the Sky Camp uh, Mini 2.0 and I loved that as well. It's a fantastic tent. The Skycamp Mini 2.0 or the 3.0 is 120 pounds. The iCamper BDB Duo is 175 pounds. This literally sets up in 10 seconds. There's two latches on the back. You undo them, the hydraulics do the rest. It is such an easy setup. And even at seven inches thick when closed, I can still keep all my bedding in there. So this is 90 inches long, it's 65 inches wide, and like I said, it's just under seven inches tall. Uh, inside, you have just over 31 square feet of sleeping space, plenty of room for two people. My wife and I have slept up there, uh, as well as stored some of our uh, personal items, our clothes and, and, stored, and bags and stuff like that. So plenty of room up here for two people. Uh, I would imagine you could fit a small child in there as well if you'd like. One of the other really cool things about this tent is this is the first wedge style tent that offers accessories like an awning or an annex. I have the annex and I love that thing. For winter camping, that is gonna be just a game changer for me to have that space to where I can change and kind of get my wet clothes off and stuff before crawling into the tent. Another thing that that does is I'm able to have a fire in there. I have a little Ignite propane fire that I can run in there and it'll heat that space up as well as trickle in to the tent itself. If you choose to do that, you definitely want to run a carbon monoxide sensor, but it is a really, really cool option to have um, on, on this tent. And like I said, it's the first wedge style tent that you can do something like that with. Big fan of iCamper, uh, have been for a long time. I recently started working with them, so I do have a discount code with them and an affiliate link, and I will link all that stuff below. All right, so let's talk performance mods real quick. I have very little done to this performance-wise, just an intake and exhaust. This is the Mishimoto cold air intake. It has a clear viewport right here, so you can inspect the filter after a long, dirty trail ride. You have an option of an oil filtered or a dry washable filter. Oiled filters are really good for off, strictly off-road applications. If you're using this on-road, you definitely want to get the, the dry washable one, which is really nice. After my BDR trip, I was able to wash this out, put it back on, and my mileage increased to like three miles to the gallon because it was just filthy. 
Really, really like this intake. It also adds quite a bit of intake sound and you can hear that blow off valve a little bit. And it is dyno proven to give you 7.5 horsepower and right about the same amount of torque. So super cool intake, uh, super cool power option to, to add to the Bronco for a relatively low cost. Probably the most commonly asked question I get on any of my videos is what exhaust do you have? So I have the Corsa Sport exhaust with the turn down tip. You also have an option of getting a dual tip in the back, but for off-road, I really wanted that clearance. Um, it's two and three quarters mandrel bed piping and uh, all stainless steel. And one of the biggest things for me is this is nine pounds lighter than the OEM exhaust. So the weight savings is great, but the biggest thing is the OEM exhaust muffler was right here, and that was the bulk of the weight. The Corsa system moved the muffler more central to the vehicle, so instead of hanging over the rear axle, it is in front of the rear axle between the two, between the front and rear wheels. So the weight is distributed a bit better with the Corsa exhaust as well as being lighter. But this is why I get asked about it all the time. Really nice aggressive tone. Um, it's very quiet when you're not on it. If you get on it, it opens up quite a bit and there is zero drone in the cab at all. Everyone has their own taste when it comes to exhaust and, and what you want, but for a Bronco, I thought the most aggressive tone of an exhaust fit the personality of it really well and this Corsa exhaust is exactly that. So this right here is a Net Attic from Regular Nets. I love this. I have one here and I have one in the back as well. So what I use these for is storing all of my inclement weather gear. So I have a down jacket, I have a rain jacket, I have some beanies, gloves. Um, when I bring my dogs, I have vests for them. Um, I store a bunch of stuff up there um, that it's just always in the vehicle. The weather's all over the place in Washington State. so. This allows me to keep the stuff in here so I'm prepared for whatever the trail throws at me. They're an incredibly easy installation. They are way over engineered um, and they're incredible because of it. Uh, I chose to have the mesh inserts so I can store smaller items in there as well. So like I was saying, beaties and gloves and stuff like that. All that stays up there because of the mesh netting. Um, and I just, I freaking love them. I highly recommend getting something from regular nets. They're a super cool uh, small company that is run out of Washington State and they just they make an incredible product and the owner Ed is um, his attention to detail is wild. You can do a bunch of things with these with the color of the stitching, color of the mesh, color of the fabric itself. So definitely go check these guys out. They're awesome. Done the last couple things of the build. So this is the IAG tailgate table uh, with the Molly panel backing. I chose this specifically because of the Molly backing. I thought that would be a really good option to store some additional stuff, uh, which it has been. I keep my first aid kit here and a couple of soft shackles. I could definitely be keeping more on it, but that's kind of what I have currently. But this offers a really good workspace for cooking, making drinks, you know, doing whatever I'm doing at camp. It's filthy right now because I'm constantly off-road and I don't get a chance to clean my vehicle ever. But uh, yeah, really, really like this. And coming from a truck, something like this was really important to me. And the last thing I want to talk about is my Iceco APL55. It is not a modification to the vehicle itself, but it is a huge part of my overland travel. The APL55 is a dual zone refrigerator and you can control those compartments separately. So typically the back half I'll run as a freezer and then the front half will be a refrigerator. There's a lot of really cool features that I like about this fridge. These clasps are uh, one of my favorite things, but it also has a soft closed lid, which is really nice. I've definitely on multiple occasions 
had a lid swing down and hit my head when I'm trying to pull something out of it. So the soft close is really, really nice. Um, these latches suck the lid down to create a better seal, which is part of the reason it's as efficient as it is. Combine that with the thicker insulation on the entire fridge, and it is extremely efficient. This draws less power than my VL45, which is a smaller fridge than this. And this is a dual zone, specifically because of how well sealed and insulated it is. I need to be able to keep my vehicle modular. Um, the setup changes depending on if the family's coming or if I'm going out solo. So I unfortunately can't mount this on a fridge slide, um, but they do offer that for this, and I would love to be able to do it. I can open this plenty in the back of the Bronco to be able to get everything that I need, but the slide would just make it that much easier. This right here is my Midland MXT 575. It's a 50 watt GMRS radio. Um, <clears throat> everything is controlled on the handset itself, which is magnetized to this little mount that I got off Amazon. Um, and this is a pretty great little system um, that I recently added to my build. Huge fan of this system. It's a very, very simple thing to use. It was a relatively simple install. Um, the 575 will not fit in the glove box, which is what I originally wanted to do. Um, and while I could have gotten a longer cable to be able to put the unit itself underneath the seat, I chose to mount it this way, and it actually doesn't get in the way of the passenger's legs. I haven't had anyone complain about it. So, Midland MXE 575, that's what I use for my communication system. So there is the walk around of the Bronco. If you have any questions about any of the parts that I have on there or why I did what I did, put them in the comments below. I will definitely get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, if you liked the video and found it helpful, I would appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing if you're not already. Again, the links for all these products will be listed in the description below. So definitely visit those. Um, some of them will be affiliate links. Uh, the iCamper one specifically, uh, it's a link as well as a code for you to get the discount. So pay attention to that sort of thing. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, until next time, I hope you're able to get off the grid and off the grind. I'll see you in the next one.